All right, I've entitled our message this morning, A Promising New Year. And I've chosen to read from our text from Psalms 121, and I've got a number of reference verses I'll be using throughout the course of these next few minutes. A Promising New Year. Psalms 121, beginning with verse 1. The psalmist says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither stumble or slumber, I'm sorry, or sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from evil, from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. Now, the Christian future is as bright as the promises of God. And, folk, God's word is good. One thing we can count on about God is he's good for his word. But as we consider the things from God, we consider his presence, first of all, with us. We need to recognize his presence. If you look at your reference, uh, Hebrews 13, verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Always remember that statement. He does not leave us. You cannot escape the presence of the Lord. The psalmist said, if he were to ascend to the highest of the heavens, God would be there. Or if he went to the lowest parts of hell, God would be there. So, folks, there's no escape from the presence of Almighty God. And then we consider God's protection. In Genesis 15, we read verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And folk, there's nothing that can penetrate the shield of God. Whom have we to fear? The scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. He is there to protect us, isn't he? Look once again, if, if you will, Psalms 121, verse 5 and 6. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is our shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. A few years ago, I shared something with you all, and I saved uh, my notes, uh, especially what's going on in Washington today. I had to share this with you, studying the message for today. Uh, Congress is having a problem <laughs> giving uh, our president the funds to build a wall. They're divided on every issue that they come to. It's, if you Democrats, you vote one way, and Republicans, you vote the other, period. They are divided. But I found an article that fit what I'm talking about today. This was printed December the 6th, 2012. 
Congress overwhelmingly votes to ban the word lunatic. And we just read about the moon. The, the Lord shall protect thee by day at the sun and by night the moon. But that's what I'm going to read verbatim, what, just a part of this. Our duly elected representatives have a reputation of being forever locked in disagreement. But apparently they can reach a conclusion when facing issues of linguistic politics. On Wednesday, now this is 2012, the House of Representatives voted, get this, 398 to 1 in support of a bill banning the word, use of the word lunatic in all federal legislation, BBC reported. 398 to 1. The one that voted for it, I voted for, I was allowed to, y'all didn't get to because I'm voting Angelina County. But I voted for him to be reelected this last term. Who was the one representative to vote no on the wildly popular lunatic ban? Texas Congressman Louis Gomer, who represents East Texas, who promptly issued a statement explaining his objections. Now get this. Not only should we not eliminate the word lunatic from the federal law when the most pressing issue of the day is saving our country from bankruptcy, Gomer said we should use the word to describe the people who want to continue with business as usual in Washington. The word lunatic. Gomer can, can continue to call his opponents lunatics all he wants, but it doesn't seem like he'll get the government's blessings. <laughs> so, the word lunatic is a Bible name. For Congress to get together and vote to disallow the word uh, is something. Uh, in uh, and I'm going to read to you. You don't have to turn there. I'll read it for you. But the two times that the word lunatic is used specifically, the word, is found in Matthew. in a moment. Matthew 4. Look at my notes a minute. Y'all forgive me a second here. Matthew 4, verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatics, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. Now if you turn over a little bit further, Matthew 24. Matthew, I'm sorry. Matthew 17, verse 15. Okay. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. <laughs> but for them to <laughs> want to get rid of the Bible name lunatic, uh, I thought was fitting of still uh, of what our Congress is hung up on, not wanting to, <laughs> to, to progress anything. But the next thing I want to mention is God's power. Psalm 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. 
I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We have the assurances there of God's power. His power is unchallenged. There is absolutely nothing that's comparable to the power of God. And then we look at God's provision. God's bank account. His credit right, <laughs> is good. I remember if y'all will forgive me for a personal story. I was a young fellow. Uh, we had several ways we got to school. A lot of times we just walked. But that, my dad told me one day, now, this actually happened. He said, when you get out of school, when you're coming home, stop by the barber shop and get your hair cut. I said, okay, Daddy, but I said, it cost a quarter. Now, I'm as serious as a heart attack. He said, it cost a quarter in those days at Elmer Jacobs Barber Shop, and I don't have a quarter. His statement was, you tell them to charge it to Ray Cobb. Of course, small town, everybody knew everybody. And my dad certainly knew the barber. But I, I was kind of doubting my dad's, I guess, integrity in that I thought I couldn't just walk up and get something without nothing. And it cost a whole quarter in those days. I wish Millie was here, so. <laughs> She's out of town today. Uh, but Dad said, charge it. But well, folks, God's bank account is good. He owns it all. He said, all the cattle on a thousand hills is mine. It's all his. He lets us barter a while, doesn't he? But God promised, Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things, these things shall be added unto you. The Lord's going to take care of our physical needs if we'll take care of what he's called us to do. Then I'll talk quickly about God's leading. He is the good shepherd. He goeth before his sheep, does he not? We sing where he leads me, I'll follow. And I ask you the question, do we follow in earnest where he leads us? And if he leads to today, as Brother Enrique brought out in the Sunday school this morning, it may be in prison. Because the Lord said they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. It may be in prison, but it's always to church. Always. And then we'll mention God's cleansing. And the scripture says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, who do we confess our sins to? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said, confess your faults one to another, but you confess your sins to him who can forgive them. If you confess to me, one sinner confessing to another. I know that uh, is not uh, popular when you mention that concerning the, uh, the priesthood in a Catholic church, but the scripture tells me that I've got one mediator between God and man, and that man is Christ Jesus. He's the one that we must go through. And then I'm going to come to one that we don't always understand, Matthew 12, verse 6 through verse 8. If you will, look back at your paper. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisements, whereof all are partakers, 
Then are ye bastards and not sons. And folks, that word's still valid. It was valid in Paul's day when he wrote it, and it's still valid. And then we go to God's wise plan. And folks, one of my favorite scriptures, and I, I, people asked me before if I had a favorite one, and I usually reference this verse right here, Romans 8, verse 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We look at all the havoc in the world and the, the heartache, and I heard this morning on news where at 7 o'clock this morning the police got a call, a fellow, or somebody shot up a car and killed a little girl, and shot the mother. And there were several kids in the car over on the northeast side of town. Folks, you see that heartache everywhere. But God's plan's still on schedule. He hasn't changed to fit you nor me. And last of all is God's invitation. The Lord said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn to me, for I am meek and lowly and hard. The Lord said, Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. And then John 6, verse 37 says, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. I just simply say to the handful of us that's here today, what kind of year do we expect? Well, I can tell you this, with Jesus, the best one yet. Amen. Without him, it's futility. You're in trouble. So my hope and prayer is as we uh, close out the year of 2018, and look forward to a new year that in our own heart and our own life that we'll be found putting him first in all things. And that way our year will be great.